Jurors watched the dash cam video that shows the moments before an unarmed man was shot by a North Carolina police officer. It's what happens off camera that is taking center stage in court this week as that officer stands trial. We do want to warn you, the audio on this tape may be disturbing to some people. Brian Todd has the details. You see him walking. Suddenly, taser lights flash on his chest, and he runs past the police car's dash camera. Out of frame, the officer yells. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! At least 12 shots later, Jonathan Farrell is dead. And tonight, the police officer who fired the weapon is on trial in Charlotte, North Carolina, where this video is a crucial piece of evidence. Officer Randall Carrick is charged with voluntary manslaughter in the 2013 shooting death of Farrell, an unarmed black man. The case has drawn attention not only because Officer Carrick is white, but also for the starkly different accounts of what happened. Prosecutors and attorneys for Jonathan Farrell's family say it was the middle of the night and Farrell was confused, knocking on a door looking for help after wrecking his car. This is my yard going. Oh my God, please. Police responded to this 911 call thinking Farrell was breaking into a home. Farrell's side says when police approached, he raised his hands as if to signal the officers to wait and that he ran out of fear for his life after the taser was pointed at him. But the video never shows Farrell's hands up and another responding officer testified Farrell and Officer Carrick were on the ground in a ditch, engaged in a struggle. Jonathan, he was like in a, in a crawling motion. He was, you know, trying to pull it up on uh, Officer Carrick. Officer Carrick's lawyers say Farrell was aggressive, that he pounded his thighs and yelled, shoot me. Former FBI Assistant Director Ron Hosko says in those few moments, Officer Carrick may have thought Farrell was armed and threatening. The question is, what's Carrick see? What does he perceive? What does he perceive in those milliseconds from somebody walking at me to somebody reaching for their waist and then coming into a full run? Farrell's side says of the 12 shots fired, eight were while Farrell was on the ground, and there was a critical pause between the first four shots and the rest. I think that's significant because I think the officer it could be argued, realized that he just shot an unarmed man, thought about it, and figured, well, I better just keep shooting. Criminal defense attorney Janet Johnson joins us with more on this now. Janet, good morning to you, first of all. You and I actually have talked about this case, covering this when it first came out. We wanted to see this dash cam video. We thought it would really piece together some mysterious pieces of the puzzle here. Well, it doesn't show the shooting. But it does answer a few questions about the officer's account and what the family claimed happened. What did you take away from it? Well, you know, it answers some of the questions, but it raises some questions, too. And in the hands of a jury, this is something they can interpret in two ways. I think both the defense and the state are going to be able to make something of this. You know, they're definitely, there are 12 shots. That seems excessive. And there is that pause. Mm -hmm. So from the defense perspective, you know, that, that's going to be a problem. Why did he pause and keep shooting? But... From the prosecution, they are going to have to answer, you know, there is this running, this what they call charging, and the officer describes something that is sort of corroborated. He's walking, and then he does, you know, rush towards them. So they're going to interpret that and try to argue to the jury, this is self-defense. Even if he was confused, the officer does not know that, and that's why he reacts the way he does. Right, because, Janet, the police say that he was being aggressive. Prosecution saying he was killed in cold blood. But we talk about, as you point out, that this charging, as we, as we saw him running, and the, the grabbing of the waist, and what one of the, the people pointed out in the package was it will be what the police officer perceived at that moment. Is that what jurors will be deciding on? Did he perceive it to be a threat, or was it a threat? Well, he's going to say he perceived it to be a threat. It's not what he perceived. It's what a reasonable officer perceived. The question is going to be, is he reasonable or is he not? Interesting. Janet Johnson, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Lynn.